didn't know until, oh, they had me uh, uh, take some German printers back down to the beach and turn them over, the MPs. And it was then that I guess some uh, medic said, are you all right? And I, well, he saw blood in my, my jacket here. So he, he patched me up. And that, that's how I lost my 83rd Division jacket <laughs> and became a, a First Division man. <laughs> well, let's let me see here. <coughs> Where are we? About mid-July, I think. And they finally uh, reunited me with my original Division 83rd. And I remember standing in a in a foxhole. I was up the, up to the here. They had moved us back. I don't I don't know why. We were on a sort of a rise, and uh, looking down into a lower part. And eventually, I saw a German uh, an aircraft gun move into position down below me here. And while I was standing there in that foxhole, I, I heard this drone. And I looked up, and I'm, I'm seeing this look like thousands of planes to me, bombers uh, coming up, swarms and swarms of bombers coming across. They, uh, I saw one explode into flames before they made a, a right flanking turn and came across our lines, began dropping their bombs, and it was like an earthquake. Uh, really shaking us up, and uh, the newspapers and the reports said 3,000 bombers had come over that day, the 25th and 26th of July, I'm pretty sure it was, and uh, they really bombed the heck out of that, that territory. <laughs> the uh, the sad thing about that was our American bombers were bombing American troops, accidentally, of course, and uh, there was quite a few Americans killed, and one large ammunition dump set off by the American bombers. They uh, finished the bombing run and then had another fright right flank and headed back across the channel. Next morning, those patrols went out and uh, into the German lines, and they found a whole bunch of Germans that were you know, bleeding at the nose and the ears, and uh, they were shock. They were in total shock. Uh, some of them just sitting there with a blank look on their face. And, uh, that was no indication that the, that the Germans were beaten, and that there was a, a, a strong armed force behind these guys. Then came that the breakthrough. Uh, I forgot the code name of that. And after that breakthrough, we were attached to General Patton, Patton's Third Army, and uh, assigned to the uh, fight in the peninsula of uh, Brittany. And especially at, uh, capture a large fortified city on the, on the coast that was needed for landing supplies. Uh, we, we took that city and then the city beside it. And anyway, Patton had to turn around and head back. He couldn't wait to get to the Wayne River. <laughs> he was, he was a, a, a real desperate man. He got in those tanks, and uh, nothing could stop him. He was almost a maniac, I guess. So, well, we were assigned to uh, guard his, or protect his right flank going through France. He was heading back uh, east instead of west. On the Rhine River, there was seemed some kind of a, uh, a right that people had to go through. You probably heard of uh, uh, Churchill and uh, General Patton. Uh, their rite of passage was urinating in the Rhine River. <laughs> well, uh, the fellows I was with uh, decided on something else. 
we run across a German uh, a battery of 88 uh, artillery pieces. And one of the jokers said, that, let's fire one of those things. Let's fire that thing. And uh, so, well, we're for that. So we jumped down to this uh, gun pit about four feet deep. And one of the guys seemed to know how to operate the breech block on that 88. And I got one of the shells from the uh, storage in the side of the gun pit. And we loaded that thing and fired it across the Rhine River. That was our rite of passage. <laughs> you know, it seemed later on, it, it took all the, the fun and joy out of it because I'm, where did that shell go? Now we were in line for some woods fighting. South of the, uh, and the ancient uh, city of Aachen was a uh, series of forests and it got to be known as the Hurtgen Forest. I don't like to even the sound of that in my mouth. And the, a horrible place. It was a 50 square mile piece of territory in Germany. This is in Germany. And um, the land was full of real steep hills heavily wooded with old growth timber, and very steep ravines, steep and uh, foggy, muddy, and fortified with uh, mines and barbed wire entanglements. And the, and the Germans had taken the uh, evacuated the civilians there and have fortified their homes with, I mean, steel and concrete. Fortified those people's homes so they looked like an innocent uh, house there in the village, but it was a fort. I, I, I just hate to, hate to think back on that. It was a, such a slaughter. Uh, one division, the American division after another, the 9th Division, the 28th, the 4th, the 1st, were sent in there and were slaughtered by the Germans. It was, it was a massacre. And uh, apparently the high command didn't get the message that they weren't getting through there. And they kept sending one unit after another into that forest. And There were so many stories. I, I just uh, I hate to keep skipping ahead, but uh, there was hours worth of stories connected with that place. 